In case you are wondering, we don't get oil from dead dinosaurs. We get it mostly from these guys, microscopic algae called diatoms, living in tiny glass houses. An empire of diatoms filling the green prehistoric oceans. One day in offshore California, about several million years ago, the Pacific Ocean rose up followed by a mass extinction of diatoms. As they died, the diatoms fell into the sunless depths of the ocean. 95% of global oil traces its genesis to the sea. The energy that powers our world, that mobilizes our cars, planes, ships, creates our plastics, runs our hospitals, heats our homes, powers our cities, mostly from dead algae. As a young man growing up in Iran, I loved to explore natural rocks. I remember my first summer job was in a coal mine. It only lasted a single day sticking dynamite in cold surfaces 40 feet underground. I thought there must be a better way to get the job done. But rocks hold other treasures besides aluminum, copper, or lead, if only one has the eyes to see them. 1982, I remember the first time I drove up to Santa Barbara, California to enjoy two-week field trip. You could see the black tar in the rocks and that hardy cabin smell. You know, the diatoms old empire was still there. We could see the outcrops of the rocks a few miles below the earth. Well, we call it the Monterey Shale Formation. People thought it wouldn't lead to much, but I saw the data. We were sitting on several billion barrels of oil. I saw pure glass, easily shattered, far easier to extract hydrocarbons than carbon rock fracturing. Today, I have almost 50 years in this industry. I can almost see in my mind's eye the source rock, the chemistry, the transport of the hydrocarbon. X-ray vision is no easy thing. I've been fortunate to rely on brilliant computer scientists, electrical engineers, geologists, and others. As executive director of the Center for Interactive Smart Oilfield Technologies, CSOFT, we have produced over 33 new patents and inventions this last 10 to 12 years. We have discovered amazing mathematical relationships and algorithms that are leading us to predict equipment failures, enhance efficiency, and improve the safety of oil and gas operations. At USC Viterbi, I dream of a future where the new breed of petroleum engineers that we trained can monitor their operations globally, no matter where they are located, with regards to safety, efficiency, and production of offshore operations. Using an elaborate system of sensors and computer software that would bring an invisible world several miles under the ocean into daily view. They say the present is the key to the past. Whatever natural processes happening today have happened in the past. I would love to have seen the heyday of the Miocene age, the golden age of mammals, the explosion of grasslands and kelp forests. 15 million years ago, Los Angeles was underwater and the diatoms ruled the coast from Baja California to Japan. You see a simple sedimentary rock, but I see a sarcophagus of an ancient world, one that without its gift, our current world stands still.